The time is officially here. This week, we are going to find out who will be playing for a state championship at the Unidome. I cannot believe we're already here. This is week 11, I believe, of the Iowa high school football season. Again, first year of Iowa football. Can't thank you guys enough for your support. You guys keep tuning into these videos. The views keep growing. Just tells me you're sharing it to people. More people are watching, which is incredible. And today, I've got eight-man predictions coming your way. Again, these are not my rankings. These are our rankers' rankings. I'm simply the middleman. Our eight-man ranker is incredible. Does a great job. And, man, he has been on fire lately uh and we're, we'll start with where we are now again eight teams remain um we're gonna play games this week four games and we're gonna find out who the four teams will be that are playing in cedar falls i don't know when exactly those seedings will come out but i think uh the association will put them out pretty quick i'm sh sure saturday or sunday um pretty soon but uh nevertheless eight man all games will be playing thursday for eight man because eight man will start um they'll lead off the the uni dome uh those games so they're gonna get those um games to go to the dome a day early uh so that'll be a ton of fun and yeah eight man football our ranker like i said has just been on fire oh sorry i didn't mean to advance that quickly i got the sheet though our eight man ranker uh so far he is 21 and 3 which is incredible the round of 32 he was 14 and 2 last week he was 7 and 1 so again our eight man ranker has been on fire 21 and 3 so he knows what he's talking about and this week, the eight-man quarterfinals, we've got two rematches from the regular season, one rematch from last year's playoffs, and one with a very similar result over a common opponent. So we're dealing with a lot of, a lot of uh, familiarity between these two teams. Um, again, eight teams with only four, four dome spots up for grabs. Five of our top six teams in the, in the rankings are uh, here, as well as number nine, number 10, and number 14. I will say, um, I've been kind of using BC more lately. Uh, to kind of look at spreads. I don't want to like create spreads. I don't think that's right. Um, but I will use the algorithm that BC more creates. Again, it's all algorithm based. Um, and we got three road teams favored. So take that for what it's worth. And leading into it, we've got our first matchup, West Winfield Mount Union, excuse me, and Don Bosco in pod A. Here's your matchup breakdown from our eight man ranker. These two teams met at the same time uh, and the same venue about a year ago when Bosco was able to knock off Winfield. 48 to 18 in the first round of last season's playoffs. That was a nine point Don Bosco lead going into halftime before the Dons were able to put up 21 unanswered in the second half. Uh, you'll see a lot of the same faces on Thursday night in Gilbertville. On paper, the Wolves appear to be about a two to three score favorite over the Dons based on a common opponent, Waco. And I can tell you that uh, that is pretty much correct. BC Moore has Winfield Mount Union as a, as a 16 point favorite. On the road again, BC Moore is where I'm getting those spreads. Uh, Winfield was able to defeat Waco 34 to eight earlier in the season, and Don Bosco was victorious 28 to 20 just last Friday night. Uh, carrying the way for the Wolves this postseason has been running back Cam Buffington. We've talked plenty about him, but uh, we can't talk about him enough. Honestly, the Iowa commit has totaled 342 rushing yards and seven touchdowns thus far in two playoff games. Sorry, don't know why Siri's talking to me right now. One time I'm trying to record a show. You guys will be okay. Uh, again, Winfield Mount Union has been able to get it done through the air with quarterback Jake Edwards as well, who's two, 10 for 19 for 220 and four touchdowns. Abram Edwards is getting it done for them on the defensive side of the ball, um, amassing 16 and a half tackles, eight and a half of those for loss. The Dons will counter with a little bit more of a balanced running attack. Three backs could see carries with quarterback and leading rusher Caden Knack, Kyler Knack, and Ty Christensen. Uh, all will see carries. Here is your prediction. Uh, and our ranker is going with the home team and an upset Don Bosco. He's going with a huge upset here. The Dons figure out a way to get it done at home. That one might be a shocker to some people, but Don Bosco, obviously, the story and the tradition of that program, um, they just find ways to win. And those sick yellow jerseys, I, I think, are a, a plus two. But no, our ranker is going with Don Bosco, the number 10 ranked team in your IF football pool, to upset the number one team, Winfield Mount Union, at home. I think that's a big factor playing at home against the number one team. Uh, and I think that's something people might overlook. So there you go. Your first matchup is going the Don's way. Heading on to the next matchup, Lennox and Bedford on BC Moore. We got Bedford as a nine point favorite at home. Our first rematch of the quarterfinal round, two teams separated by less than 25 miles. 
They already played once this year on September 8th when Bedford came away with a winner 41-30. to That first game was played at Bedford's home field just like this one will be with the Bulldogs holding the head-to-head advantage. Lennox had won the previous five matchups, though. Uh, in that contest earlier in the season, Gabe Funk, the Lennox quarterback, carried the majority of the workload for the Tigers, rushing for 204 yards and four touchdowns. But the difference was two Tiger interceptions in the passing game. Bedford kept the ball on the ground uh, the whole game with two backs rushing for over 100 yards uh, in, in Garrison Mot- Motzinger and Siles Walston. Connor Nally was able to get two touchdowns as well for the Bulldogs. Bedford will likely keep the ball on the ground with their three-headed rushing tacks, while Lennox will ride Gabe Funk through the ground in the air. Our ranker, as I pull it up, is going with the Bulldogs to repeat, get two wins over a tough team. That's not something that's easy to do. I can't underestimate that. Beating a good team twice is really, really tough, so that would prove a lot about Bedford, but our ranker is going with the Bulldogs in this one to lock themselves into a spot in Cedar Falls. Heading into our third matchup, Cam and Bishop Garrigan. Bishop Garrigan with a really, really good win that we didn't really talk much about last week. Beating Rems in St. Mary's, that was very impressive. I tip my cap to them. Not a lot of people were picking Bishop Garrigan in that one. Um, but this is really, our ranker says it's the biggest spread on paper. Rankings-wise, BC Moore has Cam as an 8.5-point favorite. Uh, but Garrigan is hot off an upset win over defending champ Remsen. Like I said, no previous matchups between these two teams this season. But again, we have a common opponent that we can at least get an idea of how much closer that game would be. Both teams played West Bend Mallard and had similar scores. Excuse me, Garrigan was able to win by a final of 36 to 31 in the second week of the season, while Cam was able to escape a narrow 2.36 to 34 victory over them last Friday in a game. Cam trailed at halftime. I think that was a shocker. Cam really squeaking by in round two. Uh, This game will also take place at the underdog Bishop Garrigan's home field with the tiebreaker going all the way down to first school alphabetically. Second streak week week in a row where Bishop Garrigan gets that coin flip of a a toss. Um, Garrigan got behind Caden Roller last week against Remsen for 147 yards on 20 carries, bringing home two touchdowns, and Cam was led by junior quarterback Chase Speaker as they have been all year. Speaker threw for 238 and added 105 rushing yards to get the job done against West Bend Mallard. He will spread it around to a host of receivers, but Jack Fullman will be his favorite as he went for 132 yards receiving in their last postseason game. Our ranker in this game is going with the Cinderella story to end one game short of the Dome. Garrigan falling to Cam and the Cougars. Uh, Cam's got that kind of been there, done that. They were there a few years ago. They won it a few years ago. They've got a speaker, hard to pick against a speaker in a Cam uniform, and that is what our ranker is going with, Cam, to lock themselves into a spot in Cedar Falls. Pod D, your final. Man, this is a fun one. Another rematch. This game was so nice that we get to see it twice. The first time around was arguably the best eight-man football game all year. The game had six lead changes as Clarksville was able to score last, and that was the difference in a road win, 38-36. to That was when Gladbrook grinding back was wire to wire number one. Clarksville ended that streak, and now Gladbrook Grindback looking for that revenge. Clarksville is one of the most run-heavy offenses in eight-man, while Gladbrook Grindback loves to get it done in the air. Interesting, though, is Clarksville's throwing the game-winning touchdown last time. Um, it was the only pass of two that Indians running back quarterback McCade Bloker completed, but he made it count. It will be a heavy dose of Bloker and sophomore Owen Becker on Thursday night. The Rebels will try to get it done with senior quarterback Isaac Clark in his favorite target junior drew ellers this one's going to be a ton of fun i can't wait for this one again an incredible rematch hard to beat a a, a good team twice and our ranker is saying the, the script is going to flip gladbrook Rhinebeck, he's saying is going to get their revenge on the road against clarksville and lock themselves into a spot in the dome gladbrook Rhinebeck was your number one team for most of the year again fell to clarksville and now has to go on the road so if our ranker has it that way it'd be gladbrook Rhinebeck. Cam Bedford and Don Bosco. Really curious to see what you guys think. I guess I didn't say Gladbrook Rhinebeck on BC Moore is a six and a half point favorite on the road. So again, three road teams favored and eight man going to be a ton of fun. I want you guys to go ahead and drop your four picks, pick your four winners in the comments below. Curious to see what you guys think. Maybe we can uh, um, make something work. Give you guys a shout out in our dome previews for everyone that picks the correct four. curious to see what you guys are thinking. Again, I appreciate you guys for tuning in. And that was it. Eight man. We're almost down to the wire. It's crazy. 
to think that. But again, be sure to subscribe to iSports and check out the rest of our preview videos for all the other classes.